the sound of the 60s. The Beatles had touched off the fuse of the screaming tempo of a decade. It was the time when teenagers let their hair grow to the rhythm of rock and discarded inhibitions to the twang of guitars. And she told me what to say, yeah. She said she loves you, and you know that can be bad. And she loves you, and you know you should be glad. Paul, John, George and Ringo were familiar far and wide. Their music topped the charts, their activities made headlines, and their records made millions. The lyrics of their songs protested and provoked. They were the kings of a strong, youthful cult. The 60s gave birth to the Beatles' trend of pop. They also saw the death of a president. John F. Kennedy's assassination shocked and stunned the world. The young man upon whom so many looked as the brightest hope for peace had been shot down before even the seeds of his rocking chair philosophy could begin to take root. Tragically, it was written in the stars that Brother Robert would meet the same fate. Violence and hate, where was peace? For some, peace was in the power of flowers. Make love, not war, was their doctrine. And for a while, the gentleness of the flower people made sense for millions. Youngsters and many young in heart garlanded themselves, put aside convention, and then did nothing. But for a man who had dedicated his life and the cause of his country, the 60s were the end of a glorious road. Winston Churchill's body lay in state at Westminster. The nation mourned the loss of its greatest leader. Thousands came to pay homage to the man who epitomized the bulldog breed. He had lived a full life to a good age, proving that youthfulness was not everything. Francis Chichester thrust age aside to show that determination and a spirit of adventure could conquer all. He sailed single-handed round the world and well deserved his knighthood for doing so. If these were the years of adventure for the season, they were certainly the days of daring for the young. Hemline zoomed upwards. The Mini became the most universally acclaimed fashion of all time. But the Maxi, as the 70s loomed, posed a threat to the Mini. The battle of Mini versus Maxi promises to be an interesting one. Jumbo became another descriptive name with which to juggle towards the end of the decade. The new giant of the skies promises to become one of the biggest strides forward for civil aviation in the years ahead cutting costs and bringing air travel within the scope of many more millions. The jumbo jet is a plane of which the United States can well be pleased. But again, through the violent death of another man, America tarnished its record of achievements. Millions of blacks look to Martin Luther King as the man who would lead them peacefully on their way towards equality. He told them he'd had a dream in which black and white lived side by side in peace. For many, that dream dimmed with his death. The 60s will be remembered for their violence. Vietnam festered as one of the sorest war-torn spots on Earth. The United States, without ever actually declaring war, poured thousands of her young men into this divided land to fight the cause of democracy against communism. The toll of death on both sides became appalling a battle without victory. For many, particularly the young, it seemed futile. They promoted their own battles in the cause of peace. Grosvenor Square was this arena. Whether the demonstrators were misguided or not is a matter of opinion. They did their cause more harm than good. In the Middle East, the enmity between Israel and the Arabs flared into a war which lasted six days in June 1967. The Israelis emerged the victors of that campaign, but it wasn't a war to end wars. The conflict between Arab and Jew goes on. They were the sad 60s in the Promised Land and in the lands of its hostile neighbors. At home, travel lifted its skirts and scudded off on the air cushion of a marvellous British invention. The hovercraft had come to stay. Bigger, better, faster, and in demand by buyers all over the world, the newest thing in transport improved technically at a rapid rate and cleaved a new cross-channel route. At the mint, the shape and denomination of money was being changed. 
Decimalization began to put in an appearance in readiness for the 70s. Counting our cash in tens will bring us in line with most of the world. Money was a sore point for a time on the Anglo-French Concorde project. But once that supersonic passenger jet made its debut, hope for its success in the 70s ran high. It looked like a winner. technical and scientific achievement during the decade is awesome in retrospect. It proved he could do anything he set his mind to. The moon was conquered. Man set his foot on another planet. The ambition of a dead president was realized. But it was also, as astronaut Neil Armstrong said, a great leap for mankind. The 60s were years of probing and conquering space, of heart transplants, of teenage revolution, of happiness for many and misery for millions, of death and birth. They were years which, apart from the marvels of science, were like so many others in the history of man. The 60s have gone, but their impact remains a challenge for the future. 